Module 8 Relational Summary Lecture GNP2, Must We Choose? As I write this, we are at a crossroads politically. We have some politicians, very few here in the United States, unfortunately, on the science side of a dangerous and artificial dichotomy. And we have many, many more in Europe who understand that climate disruption is an existential threat, a threat to the existence of most of us, if not the richest few. And then we have other politicians, unfortunately, in places where the wealthiest elites have subverted democratic rule, who tell us that it is a hoax or a reality not anthropogenic in origin and thus not under our control, which we must simply adapt to and good luck to you. But let's examine that binary position for a second. It makes for great political theater, but is it true? Are these really the only two choices we face, believe it or not? Are the choices so dichotomous that you could cut them with a knife? Choosing how to respond to climate disruption isn't at all like choosing a political candidate or group in this absurd two-party football club of a political system. There are other choices than the ones sung about in the play Oklahoma. With me, it's all or nothing. Is it all or nothing with you? It can't be in between. It can't be now and then. No half and half romance will do. You don't have to accept that humans are the cause of climate change to work actively on mitigating it, for example. Let's suppose, for the sake of argument, that climate change was not anthropogenic. Let's suppose that we humans had nothing to do with it, that it was and is the result of shifts in the Earth's magnetic field, or sunspots and solar flux, or the sudden appearance of massive mountain ranges where the Earth is now flat. And I do with great appeal to the wrong Biblican folks who think the Earth is both flat and only 6,000 years old, or the sudden subduction of mountains where ranges now exist due to the catastrophic earthquakes depicted in apocalypse, in apocalypse movies like 2012 which, in case you don't remember, didn't turn out to be such a bad year after all. Would we then be forced to choose adaptation to the crisis just because it seemed like an act of God? Is that how we react to so-called natural disasters now? Do we just wait for tornadoes or hurricanes to flatten our houses? Do we wait for fires to burn them down? Do we let ourselves slowly freeze to death as winter approaches or die of heat exhaustion as the summer swelter begins? Do we let ourselves die of thirst when the drought comes? No, we prepare and we try to mitigate. We invent. We try out new technologies all the time. HVAC systems, running water and water towers and aquifers and cisterns, rainwater catchment, motors, engines, electricity, pumps, vehicles, hell, clothes, shelters, solar panels, pencils and paper, typewriters, radio, television, everything that culture has ever evolved to make our microclimate safer and more stable and hospitable for the majority of us around the world. We also have always tried to change the climate for the good.